Hello everyone and welcome to $6 a month 25 slot bucket server and uh, today we're going to be in this tutorial talking about uh, where to get a VPS from for $6 a month that can handle at least 25 players uh, and how to um, kind of configure it with the host to be ready for the next episode and the next episode is going to be actually installing stuff to your VPS downloading bucket those kind of things and so this first episode here is going to be explicitly about um, basically where to get your VPS from and how to make sure your VPS is configured properly and how to connect to it with SSH and then the next tutorial is going to branch off there's going to be two different ones you can watch one's going to be a um, quick easy way I made a really simple bash script that you just download and run and it installs pretty much everything you need for you uh, and then you can jump right to the config, or if you want to do it manually, either want to learn or don't trust my script, uh, then there will be a video for how to install this stuff manually, and um, that'll be a separate video, so it'll be kind of this episode, and then episode 2 will branch off, then they'll both branch back into episode 3, and then from there it's just um, universal stuff, and from actually tutorial number 2 on, 2 included, uh, it'll be very universal no matter what host you have, as long as you have CentOS as the operating system. And so this is going to be extremely easy uh, because I'm going to give you all the commands, explain what they do, and um, help you through this. But however, you are going to be working with a command line instead of a GUI, so be ready for that. So uh, for a $6 a month VPS, I have never found a better deal than this uh, Spot VPS exclusive off offer. And uh, I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's been up for at least a week now. And um, I have two of these myself. And so you can either choose $6 a month or 70 two dollars annually pretty much. Uh, operating system, leave it on CentOS 6.2, that's what this tutorial is made from and I've had the best experience with CentOS honestly. Um, although if you really want another one at a later point in time uh, you can reinstall the OS um, whenever you want from the comfort host panel. Uh, bandwidth, 500 gigabytes a month should be plenty for a bucket server, however if you plan to do stuff like um, having a DIN map or something like that or also hosting the website off of it, you may consider going for a one terabyte option. Location, Buffalo, New York, whatever. Uh, if you really want to spend an extra two or three dollars just to get another location, maybe you're in Florida or something, uh, then you can choose one of those, but I'd suggest just staying Buffalo, New York. Domain name, if you're not going to be hosting a website along with your Minecraft server, you can just put none.com and what do you expect to use this VPS for? Bucket server or whatever. And then click checkout. It'll bring you to a page uh, with PayPal checkout invoice. And you can just check out or subscribe with PayPal, depending on which one you want to do. And so I've already bought a VPS, and it's right here. And so when you first buy your VPS, you'll receive three email or five emails, and one of those should be about logging into panel.comforthost.net. Now, if you can't log in, um, then at the main page, let me go here again real quick. Um, just enter your email and also um, if you want to have like two windows open and do this in one and then in the other try logins while you're waiting but um, enter your email and then if you can't log in click help I do not remember my password and then it'll try to reset your uh, password through your email so if you either didn't receive instructions for logging into here or you don't know what the password is that they assigned you you can just go here and reset your password so anyway, once you log in, it'll be here, and so you just have to click on Virtual Private Servers, and then uh, you should see one server here, unless you bought multiple ones, I have two, and you'll just click on Manage for the one that you're working with, and uh, it'll ask you for, sometimes ask you for a login, so I'm going to log in again to the panel. It usually does that when it times out, so let's do this again. Go over here and click Manage, and you should see uh, stats about your server, so... Um, what its status is right now, the IP address, uh, what node it's on, which really shouldn't concern you right now, uh, how much disk space you have, what OS you're running, how much bandwidth you have, how much memory your server has, and uh, vSwap, which is virtual swap space. Uh, bandwidth usage, this will show you how much bandwidth of your monthly allowance you've used, and memory usage, how much memory you're currently using on the system. Uh, so as you can see, this is just running pure CentOS. I just reinstalled the OS and it's running the 32-bit uh, uh, system or x86 and so it's the OS is only using a little under 10 megabytes which is ridiculously low. Compare that to a Windows server which uses anywhere from 500 megabytes to a gigabyte just for the OS itself in memory. Uh, disk usage, um, CentOS uses 569.71 megabytes of disk space and uh, doesn't use any vSwap until it starts getting pretty high in memory usage generally. So, uh, first thing you're going to want to do when you get your server is you're going to want to go to root password and type in a new root password. So I'm just going to use 
that random password. And once it refreshes, then that means it's saved. And uh, now you're going to have to SSH into your server. And SSH stands for Secure Shell, and or Secure Socket Shell, but generally Secure Shell. And Secure Shell is a method to communicate with your server remotely and do things on it. And if you've never used the command line in Linux before, uh, basically most server Linux distros don't have a GUI on them. You can install a GUI if you want, but it uses up vital resources. Um, I'd suggest doing it all through the command line. It's a lot less resource intensive and actually for a lot of things is easier and faster. So uh, using the command line, you SSH into it and that's basically your own instance of the Linux shell. And so I'm going to show you real quick how to log into your server and then the next tutorial there's going to be a little branch off here and you can either choose to the manual or the automatic option and so that'll be once I do this that'll be a, in links. So anyway I'm just going to click on my personal favorite SSH client for Windows is, S is uh, PuTTY. If you're on Mac or Linux they have SSH built in so you can do from the command line SSH root at then whatever your IP address is press enter and then proceed from there. So hostname, it is actually not looking for this hostname. If you type this in, you're not going to get anywhere. It's actually looking for this IP address, and I misspelled server. All right, it's basically looking for this IP address. That's what it cares about. So 199.241.137.215. Port is going to be 22 by default, and you're going to just click Open. And it's going to ask you to log in as, and you're going to put in root, and whatever that root password you set under this tab is, you're going to enter that. And so here you are at the uh, SSH command prompt. And then from here, we're going to uh, do the branch to the different uh, possibilities for how to set this up. So as you see below in the description, there's two buttons. One of them will take you to a automatic video. Uh, the one on the left will take you to an automatic video. And the automatic video is basically you're going to run um, three commands, and it's going to install uh, Java, HTOP, um, nano and it's going to download uh, your bucket server, give you a launch shell um, setup and uh, ch modify that launch shell. So if you don't know what that is um, it'll still work just fine and I'll explain it in that video. If you want the manual option that's going to be actually probably 20-30 lines of code and that's going to be entering um, a lot of uh, you know getting stuff, w getting it, downloading it, extracting it uh, install, installing .rpm packages, using yum, uh, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, uh, choose whichever video you want below, and I will see you next time.